with you. I'm Elizabeth Alfano, and today, live on Lunch Break Live on Jane Unchained, I'm making meatloaf. Oh, it is not meat meatloaf, it's veggie meatloaf. This is how it's gonna look when we're all done. I'm gonna throw this in the oven right now to warm it because a big key to this recipe is letting it set for six hours. So I'm throwing this in the oven, just, uh, you won't lose me, I'm right over here. Whoops putting it on 400 to heat it up. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is make veggie meatloaf. And the reason I wanna make this is because we're all getting ready for the Super Bowl. And when we go to Super Bowl parties with our friends, we bring the protein. So this dish, the whole dish, has about 60 grams of protein. That has about six servings in it. So you take that to your non-vegan friends. We are bringing the protein to Super Bowl. Okay, so how do we make veggie meatloaf? It's very simple, but it requires a little bit of organization. So I've started things for you. So I've put roasted garlic already in my blender. And when I roast the garlic, what I do is I put them in tin foil and I leave them right in their shells. And then after about an hour, it takes that long to roast garlic, but that's okay, you can do other things while you're roasting garlic. I uh, take them out when they're cooled and I put them in my, my cuisine art. Now I'll say this little thing about my cuisine art. If you're thinking, oh my gosh, cuisine art, it's expensive and I, I can't cook that way every day, do not fear. Go to amazon.com and get yourself a refurbished cuisine yard. This little guy is refurbished and I want to say it ran me like 55 to 60 dollars. So, and it's never broken on me. I've had it for two years. Refurbished cuisine yard is the way to go. Okay, so I've got my roasted garlic in the food processor and then I'm going to throw in some onions and celery. So what I did was, let you get a little close up on that, I really wanted to sweat the onions and even brown them a little bit, uh, but I threw the celery right in there after I had been working on the onions a bit because I want the celery to infuse its juice but not be soft. I wanted to give it a little crunch into what we're doing. Okay, I put that in and then I also put in a cup full of lentils. Now I made my lentils already, super easy. You make them like you make rice, no big deal, but I do not use water. I use mushroom broth. So the stars of this recipe are gonna be mushrooms and tempeh. So we're talking protein, it's tempeh. I'm bringing, the, I'm bringing the protein, I'm bringing the tempeh. So I soaked and made my lentils in mushroom broth. Oh yes I did. Okay, so I put those in. My cuisine art, there you go. Also quinoa is gonna add a little bit of protein for us, so I made quinoa ahead of time. This cup will add probably about six grams of protein to our entire veggie loaf. The lentils will also add about six or seven grams of protein to our entire veggie loaf. And the tempeh is going to add 40 grams of protein to our entire veggie loaf. We'll get to making this in a second, but uh, 40 grams of protein, so take that. All right, so I'm going to blend this together spoon things just to make sure that everybody's getting attention here. I don't want anybody left out. Ah, it does smell good. Now I'm going to tell you a little trick. Salt generously, but never salt at the end. Always salt and pepper as you go, otherwise you risk over salting. So if you salt as you go, the salt stays with the food and again it infuses it with flavor. If you salt just at the end, you're just going to add too much because it wouldn't have time to have been included into the food itself. So better to salt as you go so that you let things cook together and pepper because we love you. Uh, now you gotta, when you're spicing, you gotta figure it out for yourself. Do you like a lot of salt? If you do, then you gotta add some. If you are low on salt or your doctor says don't and all these things for you, then of course you decide for yourself. I'm putting that in, we're going to blend again. It's going, it's going, it's going. Okay, this is good, but I don't want to over blend 
because I still like that I have chunks of celery. I don't know if you can get in here and see this, but I have some chunks of celery. So it's not beaten to a pulp, which is, which is, oh, I'm glad about that. So, okay, I'm going to move now my mise en place. So just some of our elements, you know, we had celery and mushroom and onion. Okay, so I'm moving this back here and I'm bringing in the big bowl. Okay, so we're gonna start mixing are okay great uh, are we still live we still are live. But, sorry um, we we had a we're not sure what happened <laughs> it's technical error but we think we're still live are we still getting comments yes okay so i'm going to take everybody's comments towards the end because this is sort of a complicated uh recipe and so i just want to get through it's not hard it's just lots of elements so i want to get through the elements and then i will uh, take some questions my lovely camera woman april can uh, shout out all your comments. Hopefully you guys are liking this. Now don't be daunted by how many ingredients are in this. It's just your simple saute up some mushrooms and celery and onions and uh, bring it all together. So it's not hard in any way, but just requires a little bit of forethought. And of course, we're already thinking about the Super Bowl, so it does have forethought. And maybe even more than the Super Bowl itself, we're all thinking about how we're gonna walk into that party and be like, I brought the protein, here it is. Uh, another little trick. So salt as you go, clean as you go. Yeah, I learned that one the hard way. Um, now I get to put my salt and pepper front and center, which is fantastic. Okay. You just never know how it's gonna shake out in my kitchen. Uh, okay, so now we get to, to add in the stars of the show. So mushrooms, like I said, you're never gonna have enough umami flavor in any dish, so mushrooms are key, key, key all the way. Uh, to the very end of a dish. I've sauteed, oh, about a cup. I mean, I've, I've sauteed three quarters of a box of mushrooms. It sautés down to about a cup of mushrooms, but because I love mushrooms so much, I've added a little more. So maybe it's like a cup and a half. But the key thing here is, mushrooms can get juicy. Let's see if you can see that broth. Mushrooms give off juice. This is liquid gold, people. Mushroom juice is liquid gold, so you don't want to ever let that go. So what I did before you guys joined me is I drained my mushrooms. I'm going to try to drain them even a little more. And I gave my tempeh a little mushroom juice. So we're going to go now and cook the tempeh. Um, but it's going to be not just sautéed in olive oil, it's also going to have that umami juice from the mushrooms, which is so wonderful. Okay, so I added my mushrooms. You see that I didn't put my mushrooms in the cuisine art because I, I like them to be chunky. I want this dish to have chunk in it. So uh, that's kind of fun. And of course, the uh, tempeh has a lot of chunk. So tempeh comes like this. This particular um, flavor is flaxseed, so you can use flaxseed for sure. In, in this, what I have already in my pan is original because I like to spice things myself. So if you use this, you see it comes as a brick. So I really wanted to crumble it basically about the size of hamburger meat, just so that it has that kind of texture. So I just used my hands and I crumbled it. And I have some handy dandy olive oil, which we always have ready in our house. Handy dandy olive oil in this pan. But I also have, in addition to the mushroom juice, I have the following. Here's where it gets important. I really want to season the tempeh. So right here I have paprika. So I'm gonna sprinkle a teaspoon of paprika. I have cumin. I don't think I could live without cumin. People kind of don't think of it very much or don't cook with it very much, not me. I'm adding generous portions of cumin. Just about a teaspoon. And if you're looking for all the directions to this recipe, it's gonna be on janevelezmitchell.com which might also be janeunchained.com. And of course, it's also gonna be on my website, elizabethalfano.com. Uh-oh, I'm getting low on oregano. Do not let that happen to you. Uh, so I also do a huge pinch of oregano right here. Now remember, when you are seasoning things, you gotta do it to your taste. If oregano is the thing you crave every day, then double it, go, go right ahead. There's no steadfast rule here. You do just what works for you. And what works for me is also basil, basil, basil. And then I know we did salt. Oh, wait a minute, we did not salt this one yet. So hold on to your bootstraps, people. I'm gonna add some salt. And I'm gonna add some pepper. Peppa. And I'm gonna add 
More salt, it's garlic salt, just to make sure we are moving in the right direction of savory and umami. So I'm gonna add some garlic salt to this. Okay, now here's a biggie, another umami. We always have soy sauce ready to rock. So I've got soy sauce in here as well. So I'm gonna add some soy sauce. I'm really seasoning this tempeh. I want it to be very flavorful. So again, this tempeh is already, I'm moving over to my stove. This tempeh is already cooked, so I'm just here to infuse the flavors and make this a luscious dish. So I'm gonna put it on sort of a medium heat and, oh, look at that paprika coming through. So I just really wanna mix everything together, let it soak in, give it some time to do this making sure that everything gets coated. You saw I was generous with the um, soy sauce as well. I basically am a generous chef. Can we just say that? I'm a generous chef. That's, that's, that's how I roll, okay? So I think other people measure to the T. I know, I really like the feeling of cooking. I like to be in the kitchen and have fun, blow off steam, get rid of stress. That's what I like to do. So, okay, I'm just gonna let this kind of sit and enjoy itself. And I'm going to go to the last step, which is we're going to make that tasty, zingy, zing tomato sauce on uh, the top of our meatloaf. Remember when I showed you the meatloaf, it had a red covering? That's coming. That's where this comes in. So I have taken Simple old can of tomato paste, ain't no thing, ain't no big deal. And then I've taken diced tomatoes that have juice in them. And I wanted to make sure that I got the juice. So I just drained the top of this can, making sure that I had lots of juice. And I'm stirring the juice and the tomato paste. And you guessed it, a lot of seasoning goes in here. So um, I've already done a lot of soy sauce before you guys arrived and I've been working that in. And guess what? We're also going to do, you guessed it, garlic salt. All my, all my usual suspects. Hold on, just making sure I've got the right move here. Okay, uh, all the usual suspects. So oregano, more of that. Always happy to do that. Uh, cumin, cumin. More of this. So basically everything that we just did for the tempeh, we're doing it again here. And you just can't have enough of this good stuff. And this is what's really gonna flavor the lentils, which we did salt, but you know, we're gonna bring that really to a, a, a powerful punch. The quinoa, everything that we have in our handy dandy bowl there. So I think we got it all, salt. Ah, we did not pepper. We did not pepper. So let's put that in. Some pepper, we had garlic salt, we have soy sauce, we have cumin, we have oregano, we have basil, we have paprika. I think we're looking fly, people. I think we're looking fly. Okay, so I'm just mixing this. Hopefully you can see that. I'm mixing this. Yum, okay. Now, you gotta taste things, people. You can't, you can't be cooking and not tasting. That doesn't work, right? You taste at home when you cook. I sure hope so. What's the fun of things if you can't be tasting along the way? That's what I say. Mm. Okay, by now you should be making the list of all the people you're going to walk up to at the Super Bowl party and be like, oh yeah, veggie, meat, veggie meatloaf, lots of protein, because it's gonna wow people's socks off. And the great thing about a dish like this, even though it does have lots of elements, you make one or two baking dishes full and it feeds 10, 12 people. So, you know, it's some work up front, but then you get the payoff later. Okay, I'm gonna get a good cooking spoon. Do not go away. Oh, we're so organized in this kitchen. I'm getting a good cooking spoon so that we can bring these elements together. In case you have forgotten, we are mixing quinoa, and lentils, I like to use dark lentils, celery, sauteed onions, everything salted there of course, and my mushrooms. And I wanna leave my mushrooms chunky because I want to bite into them, quite frankly. I want to bite into them into my meatloaf. So, huh, okay, um, my stove's making some funny noises. 
All right, so you see that I've got some very chunky meatloaf going on here. And now I've got my sauce, so it's just a question of bringing everything together. I'm gonna go check on our tempeh, see how we're doing, and I'm happy about it. So I'm going to now bring in, oh, steam. Can you see the steam? I don't know if you can. Nice and hot. All the flavors infused. You see how the tempeh picked up all that soy sauce that was in here? So, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. So good and filled with umami. And not just are we packing the protein, but we're also packing, uh, taking on hunger. And you're gonna eat one of these, it's gonna be so dense, and you're gonna be very full once you're done, which is so great. Okay. So you see how it all comes together. Lots of elements, but really it's just a question of sauteing and then bringing them all together. So not a whole heck of a lot that's hard here. You just gotta have spices. That's what we're talking about. If you wanna make a, a meat dish or a, a dish that, that resembles a meat dish, and if you're making it for meat eaters, and there just might be a few of those at a Super Bowl party, uh, you really wanna make sure you got the umami down. And so that's what we're doing here today. And I think that even like, shows itself in this, even though it hasn't been cooked yet. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. Usually, I've got my baked dish, and I would like to make life simple for myself. So because of that, I put parchment paper down. I put parchment paper down so that I can lift this up later and take it out. So, um, and, and then I'll spoon all of this in. I think I have enough time to show you just how it spoons in. Okay, you guys, you ready? And then I preheat my oven to about 400, and I let this bake for about 40 minutes. And here is the key. So we've learned a couple things today. Salt as you go. Oh, thank you. Salt as you go. Clean as you go. And any meatloaf dish, or at least my veggie meatloaf dish, it's got to set for at least six hours. And what I mean by that is, when you take it out of the oven, it has to sit at room temperature for six hours. This is how it comes together and stays together. So, oh my God, I just love the color of this. So there are two ways of doing it. If you like your meatloaf very tangy, and I kind of do, um, you can do a middle, in fact, maybe I'll do that now. I think we have enough. You can do a middle row of, of uh, spiced and seasoned tomato. So let me put that in now. I'm just going to give us a thin layer of spicy tomato because I want to make sure that when everybody bites into this, it has a really good zingy flavor. Okay. I don't want to do too much because ultimately the, ma the majority of it really should be on top, but okay. Back to spooning. So this plate, this dish for me, it took me a little while to create this. It didn't, it didn't come together immediately first. I've had lots of trials and error with it, but ultimately what I love about this dish is I feel like I can cook it on a Sunday and it's gonna last me all week. So if you've got kids who are going to school or you know that you've got a busy week and you can't be cooking, you just you know take some time to yourself on a Sunday and chop some vegetables, which I always love to do. I feel like it really decreases my stress level to be in the kitchen mindlessly chopping celery and mushrooms and washing vegetables makes me feel really great. So, you know, if I do that on a Sunday, then I've got dinner at least twice that week and more if you like it. <laughs> so if you're, you know, you've got kids to feed and you've got a busy week, this I think is a great recipe. Okay, so I've tried to keep this as as organized as possible. Maybe I should turn it around for you to be able to see better. Uh, we got a little leftover, but I'm gonna let that ride. Okay, now here I go big. I go big or go home, people. Actually, we're talking Super Bowl, so that's the theme. Big or go home. 
I have to say, I'm sad that the bears aren't in it. Hey, hey, Chicago. I'm sad that the bears are not in it. I, I thought we were going to do that. But all right. Okay. But LA's in it. LA Rams. Go LA Rams. Go. And although I sort of got to say shout out to Tom Brady, who is vegan. And shout out to Rob Gronkowski, who is also vegan, at least in season. At least this is what I understand. Maybe not 100% vegan, but like 98% vegan while in season. So uh, they're both on the Patriots. So maybe I got to give a shout out to the Patriots as well. Maybe I'll send this recipe to Tom Brady. What do you think? Uh, okay, you guys can all weigh in on that uh, as you comment. And I'm just about to get to your comments. Okay, because I like things to be pretty, I've got a sprig of thyme. Now, other people are probably not as messy as I, so I'll try to try to wipe that up for you. But um, here we go. Meatloaf, it's going in the oven, 40 minutes. And you see, that was no big deal. Okay, but if you remember, before we started together, woo, I had already made meatloaf before. So now I'm gonna let my wonderful, beautiful camera woman try some meatloaf. Okay, I'm taking it out. Oh yeah, oh. So remember, as we discussed, the meatloaf has to set. So I made this meatloaf last night. I took it out of the oven. I let it set right on top of the oven for six hours. And then overnight when I went to bed, I put it in the fridge. And I have to say, this is the kind of dish that's better even the next day because you just let all those flavors sit together and uh, very good. Okay, so now I really want my camera woman to try this, but I've heated it up for her and I'm afraid it might be too hot for her to try. But I'm going to uh, see if I can't cut into it and get a little bit of air into it so the poor thing doesn't burn her tongue. Okay. All right, people. Oh, let's, let's bite into it together, shall we? Look at that. I'm going to cut it for my girlfriend April, but woo. Okay, so it's still steaming. I don't know if you can see the steam, but you see the layers of, that's my tempe right there. There's a mushroom right there, and there's celery and onions in there. And even looking back, whoops, I could probably have even put more tomato sauce on that. So um, I'm gonna take this plate over to my April, right over here, and she and I are gonna switch, and uh, she's gonna hop in. She's so cute with her red glasses. She's gonna hop in and try the meatloaf. Now, hopefully, April. Oh, that is hot. Hi, Hiya, April. Hi. Hi. <laughs> thank you for doing this, and thank you for being part of Jane on Chains Lunch Break Live, and also my the first person to try my meatloaf. I'm so happy to have I'm you excited. here. Excited. I didn't realize. Now, if it's too hot for you, I don't want you to kill yourself. But oh, I can see it steaming. You poor thing. Hmm. Not too hot? Mmm. Mmm. Really? It's really good. Tell the truth. It's really, really good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so what do you like about it? <laughs> nope. Oh, no, okay. In fairness <laughs> to you, I'll, I'll look at the dish again. Okay. I like that it, the integration of all the flavors is really, really well done. And I like how it's a little bit crunchy, but it's, um, it's moist. And um, the tomato sauce especially integrates with the rest of the flavors really well. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for saying that. So Kim Wagner Lee says, herb tins are a great idea. Yeah, uh, Kim, I really like having herb tins because then everything's organized ahead of time. I have to give a shout out to my boyfriend for being that organized. Um, yeah, garlic salt, Tammy Ellis, garlic salt on everything. I completely agree with you. So um, April, would you take this to a Super Bowl party? Anytime. You would. Mm -hmm. Okay, and would you feel like you have to preface to people, this is a replacement for meatloaf? Do you feel like you could actually say, hey, it's meatloaf? Or do you think you should say, oh, it's veggie loaf? Most of the people I hang out with, I just wouldn't say anything. I'd just take it and they'd eat it and they'd be really happy. Yes, <laughs> yes, you're so right. You're absolutely so right. Yes, I completely agree. Okay, I'm gonna look at the dish one more time and maybe we'll do a tad switch and April's gonna come to me and I'm gonna go right back to my kitchen station, I think. It's crazy here in the kitchen. I'm going right back to my kitchen station. Um, I just want to grab the dish myself and say, I'm gonna take a bite. You know, every time you make something, it's always a little different. So, um, 
grab my own spoon here. It's always a little different every time. So, bite in. It's pretty good, right? I gotta say it's super good. It's super, super good. And the longer you let it set, the better it holds together. And um, if you like, you can even go heavier on the garlic, which is always kind of fun. The roasted garlic, which is gonna always infuse wonderful flavor. So I just wanna thank everybody for being with me. I'm Elizabeth Alfano, right here on Jane Unchained Lunch Break Live, making veggie meat love, cause we are getting ready for the Super Bowl. We are packing the protein and I'm not bringing meat. No way, I'm not going to a Super Bowl party bringing meat. I'm bringing my veggie meat loaf. Thanks for watching everybody.